Law of Acceleration, Part 1. So uh, Newton established three basic laws to explain uh, the connection between motion and forces. And in some of the other tutorials, uh, we looked at the law of inertia. And the law of inertia explains motion when we either have no forces or un only balanced forces. But uh, the more interesting situation is uh, when we have uh, unbalanced forces that are um, affecting the motion, and in fact with unbalanced forces uh, the motion has an acceleration, and that's uh, what we will look at now. Uh, this law of acceleration is also called Newton's second law of motion. So uh, just to remind you, when there uh, is no force, or uh, if there are balanced forces, then an object moves with constant uniform motion. So the simplest example, something floating in space, absolutely no forces on it, just moves with a constant speed, constant uh, direction in a straight line. Uh, but if we have uh, balanced forces, like this uh, bowling ball rolling on the floor, uh, we have the force of gravity that would be pulling down on the ball, uh, but uh, this force of gravity is balanced by the support uh, force of the floor, and those two are in balance. And if we have negligible uh, friction, then uh, these two balanced forces lead to, again, constant uniform motion, uh, constant speed uh, motion in a straight line. Now, the law of acceleration, the first part of the law of acceleration, says that objects always change their velocity in the direction of the unbalanced force. So if we take this asteroid that's uh, moving uh, through space and there's no force on it, if instead we had a force acting in the downward direction, then the asteroid would change its motion and its velocity would change in the direction of that force. Uh, so notice that the asteroid is not moving straight downward, but its motion is deflected in that direction. The uh, horizontal spacings actually stay uniform and the vertical spacings uh, slow out in the direction of the force. Uh, we saw some of this already when we looked at parabolic arcs. Uh, here's another situation. Let's say that we have a force that, uh, in the first case, an object is moving from left to right, and the force is acting from left to right. Well, uh, what's going to happen is the object is going to slow out or accelerate in uh, that direction. A uh, similar situation occurs if uh, the object is instead moving right to left while the force is still uh, left to right. Uh, in this case, um, the object is going uh, against the force and this results in a deceleration. Uh, in physics, we actually uh, refer to this as also being an acceleration just in the negative sense, but uh, the more familiar way of expressing this is that it's decelerating, or in terms of animation, that it slows in. Now, uh, you've already met these sort of situations because in the first case, this is like a ball that's uh, falling uh, downward and slows out as it falls. And in the second case, this is like a ball that is rising and is slowing into the apex. Again, in both cases, the object is changing its velocity in the direction of the uh, applied force. Now, it gets more complicated if the um, direction of the motion is uh, perpendicular or at an arbitrary angle from um, between the direction of the motion and the uh, force. So uh, in this more uh, general case, we have a deflection of the path of action. 
the uh, spacings are affected. So in this case, the, um, the ball is being acted on by force, which is up and to the left. And so it slows in, uh, moving uh, from left to right, and it is slowing out in its motion from bottom to top. Uh, this really is fairly intuitive if you think about uh, a force pulling on an object in, in that direction when an object's already moving um, in this other direction. Now, uh, let's consider some more cases of uh, a force uh, pulling on something and uh, the direction or how that affects the motion. So what we're going to look at here is a spool like you see in this picture that has a string and in the first case we have the string wrapped so that it's looped over the top and we're going to pull on the string and then we're going to repeat that but in the situation where the spool is flipped and we have the string looped uh, underneath. So let's just see what that looks like. So you were probably surprised that in the second case uh, the spool again moves from right to left, but this is uh, just reinforcing what was said about the law of acceleration, that objects always change their velocity in the direction of the applied force. So the uh, applied force is right to left, and so the um, uh, spool slows out in uh, that direction. Let's do a very similar uh, example where we pull on the pedal of a, a tricycle with a string. And uh, in what direction is the uh, tricycle going to move? Let's just look at that video. So here's the, you see the tricycle, there's a string attached to the pedal. Now watch very carefully the position of the pedal on the screen as we uh, pull. So you see that once again, um, the motion is in the direction of the applied force. And in fact, even though you think of the pedal as uh, rotating backwards in that orientation as the wheel is turning, uh, in reality, the pedal is always um, moving uh, from right to left in the same direction as the applied force. Now, let's look at uh, something else about the law of acceleration that uh, when we have uh, two or more uh, forces in order to determine the acceleration we need to determine the net force which is also called the total force. So uh, if we have a situation where a 10 pound cat is uh, falling but there's a significant amount of air resistance uh, acting on the cat so in this case the uh, force of gravity would be 10 pounds the force exerted by uh, air resistance, suppose it was seven pounds, that means that the net force on the cat would only be three pounds, and so the acceleration would be determined by that, by that net force. And in fact, uh, the law of acceleration tells us that the motion only depends on the net force, not on the individual forces. So we don't have to worry about the individual forces, uh, say these guys pushing on this boat, uh, all we have to do is find the net force uh, by adding up uh, all of their uh, combined forces to determine the motion. Uh, now adding up these forces can be a little complicated if the forces are uh, pulling and pushing at all different angles, but uh, aside from that um, computational uh, detail, uh, the law of acceleration tells us that once you find the net force, that's going to tell you the acceleration. And um, in fact, 
the situation that we've been discussing about having balanced forces, uh, that's the same thing as saying situation when we have balanced forces, that's when the net force is zero. So in uh, the simple situation, the sack sitting uh, on the floor, uh, force of gravity pulls down, the floor pushes up with the same uh, amount of force, but in the opposite direction. These two uh, forces, when we add them up, they add up to zero, and so the net force is zero, and that's going to tell us from the law of acceleration that the acceleration is zero. Uh, basically, what we already know from the law of inertia. So, in summary, uh, the law of acceleration explains the link between forces and motion. This is Newton's second law of motion. Uh, mathematically, it's, the expression is uh, F equals MA. Uh, the first part of the law of acceleration says that objects always change their velocity in the direction of the unbalanced force. Uh, when we have multiple forces, then we need to add them up in order to find the net force or the total force, and that is what's going to tell us uh, the acceleration. And um, again, this acceleration only depends on the net force. We don't have to worry about the the individual forces. So this is the first part of the law of acceleration and the um, next tutorial of part two will uh, specifically connect uh, what, uh, how much acceleration we have, what is the timing and spacing uh, look like uh, depending on the force in particular, uh, depending on how the force on an object compares with the weight of an object. So that will be in part two, so uh, we'll see you then.